So now the second question we want to ask ourselves, remember under business finance, I told you we are answering two questions. Number one, where do we get the money from? That is sources of finance. And then number two, what is the cost of the money? That is cost of capital. So now that we finish where we get the money from, let's look at the second aspect, cost of capital. And this is where the calculation is, cost of capital. So what is cost of capital? In a simple language we say, cost of capital is the rate of return that a company must pay must pay to the providers of finance. The rate of return that a company must pay to the providers of finance. That is the idea about it. Now, usually, the cost of capital entails two things. Number one, it entails the minimum return that the investor wants. And number two, it entails the risk involved in the business that we are looking at. So, for instance, if you go to somebody and borrow money, say $10,000, to run a mobile money business, and you go to another person for the same $10,000 to run Susu Savings business, the interest rates are going to be what? Different. The person may have a minimum return, but the risks associated with those business will be added to the minimum return, and that will give you what? Your cost of capital. That's the idea we are talking about here. Also, in discussing the issue about cost of capital, usually we take into consideration what? The opportunity cost. When we talk about opportunity cost, we refer to what the money would have been used for if it is not used for this project. So for instance, if this $10,000 is not given to you for your mobile money, what can the uh, provider of the finance invest this money into? So if the provider of finance can invest it in some strong investment and earn 10% interest, then if they give it to you, they won't earn this interest, right? So meaning, when they give it to you, they should at least receive this same 10% interest when they give the money to you. So sometimes opportunity cost is also taken into consideration in determining the cost of capital of a fund. For that reason, we say that the cost of capital has three components. Number one is the risk-free rate of return. So three elements of cost of capital. The risk-free rate of return. Number two, the premium on business risk. And then the premium on financial risk. So these are the three elements of cost of capital. So what do we mean then? The risk-free rate of return is the yielding rate or the returns on government bond. You know government bonds are risk-free because when you buy them, definitely you get your money back. So they are risk-free. So when we are determining the cost of capital, the first thing we ask ourselves is, what is the treasury bill rate? So maybe the treasury bill rate is 12.5%. That's the starting point. Then we ask ourselves, what is the business rate associated with this business? Remember, I use mobile money. If we are doing Momo, then the risk is that people may come and attack you and steal the money away. So that risk, we need to earn some premium on that risk. So maybe the premium on that risk can be 2%. Then we come to 
premium on financial rates. This is the rate that the company may be highly what? Geared. So if the company is already geared, then there is a risk already financially in the business. That could also be maybe 1.5%. So when we finish, we add the three components together, and that is going to give us what? The cost of capital. So cost of capital entails three elements. The risk free rate of return, that is the return on government bonds. The risk because of the nature of the business, and then the risk because of the financial structure of the company. Now, the financial risk comes from the capital structure of the company, and we will look at this later on. Because usually, capital structure is divided into two, how much equity we have and how much debt we have. And we'll look at that one later on as we move on with our discussion. So let's start the journey and let's look at equity. As we did equity first, let's start with equity and let's determine the cost of equity. of cost of equity, there are three ways we can calculate the cost of equity. The first thing is when there is a constant, sorry, when there is a constant dividend, the second thing is when there is a constant growth in dividend and the third thing is if we are using what we call the capital asset pricing module so these are the three things that's the count and I'm going to explain that so the first thing is when the company pays a constant dividend now if the company pays a constant dividend, we say that the cost of capital the cost of capital, which is KE, equals DO over PO. So KE is the cost of capital. DO is dividend just paid and then PO is the X right X share price or X share value now I want you to make sure you follow me well here there is a difference between what we call cool price and then X price what we are using here is the X share value or the X price. Let me explain this carefully. If we say people are buying shares at cool price, it means that if we declare dividend right now, they will receive what? Part of the dividend. That is why it is called cool price, cool share, cool rights price. In that case, when you buy the share right now, this year you receive dividend. But the X Price means when you buy the share right now, you receive dividend from what? Next year. So cool share price, you receive dividend this year when we issue the dividend. X price, you will not receive dividend this year, you receive dividend what? From next year. For that reason, always the PO, which is the market value, remember this is in a simple language, the market value, has to always be the X market value not the cool market value. What does that mean then? It means if we are giving the cool market value, we must always calculate the X market value and bring that to calculate our KE. So the way we get the X market value is the cool market value minus the dividend. 
minus the dividend. Because remember what I told you. If you buy the shares at cool price, meaning you receive dividend this year when it is declared. But if you buy it at X price, you will not receive dividend when it is declared. So always, it is the X market value we bring here. For that reason, if the examiner gives you the cool market value, you must always calculate what? The X market value, which is the cool market value minus the dividend payable. That is what we refer to as constant dividend. But the second one is critical. And that is when there is constant growth in dividend. Now, when there is constant growth in dividend, what do we mean? It means KE will be equal to DO out 1 plus J over KE minus J. Very important. Sorry, 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 that formula is wrong. That is rather business valuation formula. Because this formula is somehow the same. So PO plus J rather. This should be the formula. So this is the formula for the constant growth in dividend. This is why we are assuming that everything else is the same. The G here is the growth rate in dividend. Growth rate in dividend. Now, when it comes to the growth rate, sometimes the examiner will not give it to you. So you must calculate it yourself. And there are various ways through which growth rates can be calculated. So let's look at calculating growth rates. The first way the growth rate is calculated is using past dividend using past dividend in that case we say that the growth rate equals the nth root of the final dividend divided by the initial dividend minus one the growth rate equals the nth root of the final dividend divided by the initial dividend Minus one. So, what is the meaning of that? So, let me pull an example up. So, let's say that KPLC has or yes, has paid the following dividend. So let's put year here and let's put dividend here. And this is in cents. So 20x5, 20x6, 20x7, 20x8, 20x9. So let's say here we're going to have 20 cents, 25 cents, 32 cents, 27 cents, 38 cents. So this is the... It, uh, Question and the requirement is to calculate the growth rate. Calculate the growth rate. So how do we go about this? Now, the nth root here is the number of growth period that is occurring, and you have to be careful. If you check here, there are one, two, three, four, five periods here. But the n will not be five because when we are checking growth, it will be this to this one. This to this, two. This to this, three. And this to this, four. Meaning that the end that we will bring here, even though there are five years, will be what? Four. It means anytime if there are five, we will bring four. If there is six, we will bring five. If there is three, we will bring two. In that order. Are you getting the principle? So from that, let's calculate a growth rate for KPLC. So J equals N. Sorry. The nth root of final div over the initial div minus 1. So look at it. So the n is going to be 5. So we're going to have the fifth root of the final dividend. 
38 cents over the initial dividend, 20 cents minus 1. Now remember, it is growth rate. So when we finish, our answer must be in what? Percentages. Okay? So, do me your calculator. Did it say 5 or 4? Okay, 4. Yeah, good. Okay. Do you read your scientific calculator? You have scientific? Yeah. Okay, so let's go for it. What you got? So times hundred. Seventeen point what? Four percent. So that is the first way that growth rates can be what calculated. So in the question, if the examiner gives you past dividends like this, then he says calculate KE using the dividend valuation model. Then quickly you have to know that you must use the second method, which is the growth rate. We will come back to questions in a moment. B. The B, so first has to do with past dividend. The second one has to do with what we refer to as the Gordian approximation. Gordian approximation. Now, with the Gordon approximation, this is where we say the growth is R times B. The growth is R times B. Where R is the rate of return, the rate of return of reinvestment, and then B is the proportion of earnings retained. The proportion of earnings retained. So that gives us the growth rate. So how is that calculated? So let's say we have a company. So example, QPLC paid a dividend of $20 million after adding profits after tax of $125 million. If the investors, sorry, if the shareholders required rate of return, RRR, is 25%, calculate the growth rate. So, QPLC paid a dividend of $40 million dollars after earning part of $125 million. If the shareholders RRR, that is the required rate of return, is 25%, calculate the growth rate. 
So how do we go about this? Remember our formula here, solution. We said, now once you see a question like this quickly, it means golden approximation has to come into your mind. So from the golden approximation, we say G equals R times B. And we said R is the rate of return for what? Reinvestment. So from this question, the shareholder's rate of return, R, is 25%. Then we said B is the proportion of earnings retained. So what, how do you think we will calculate that? How do you think we calculate that? Yes. If we make this profit and we pay this dividend, then how much do we, ret do we retain? So R will be equal to profit retained over total profit times 100%. Make sense? Profit retained over total profit times 100%. So how do we get a profit retained? Or earnings retained? We, we made a profit of 125. Then we paid a dividend of 20 mil. So we retain how much? 105 million dollars. Does it make sense? So now our R will be equal to 105 million divided by the profit we made. 125 million times 100. Can I have an answer? That is how we get the profit retained. Eighty-seven point five. Eighty-seven point five percent. So now we have our B. This is B. We have our B. So we have our B. The profit retained. And we have our, our R, the required rate of return. So G will now be equal to what? 25% times what? 87.5%. So what do I have? But I didn't leave office early or what? But I thought he said you will be here six. If I six minutes. I think if it's seven, I said I'll come. <laughs> you right. No, I'm the lie. What do we have? Zero point two one. So times hundred. Twenty one point nine. Twenty one point eight eight. So twenty one point eight percent. Mm -hmm. So that becomes what? A growth rate. So we can calculate the growth rate either using past dividend, and this is how we go about it, or using the golden approximation. In the exam hall, it is based on the question that you will decide which growth you are going to be using, either golden approximation or the past dividend. If you want to write class now, that is once you know already, crap. So let me let me know even talk.